Good morning. Today is Monday, August 16th. I'm Pastor Sean, and this is your morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light, and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light, and our life. O come, let us worship him. All right, today we have 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 through 23. Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus, our Lord? Are not you my workmanship in the Lord? If to others I am not an apostle, at least I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. This is my defense to those who would examine me. Do we not have the right to eat and drink? Do we not have the right to take along a believing wife, as do the other apostles and the brothers of of the Lord and Cephas? Or is it only Barnabas and I who have no right to refrain from working for a living? Who Who serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard without eating any of its fruit? Or who tends a flock without getting some of the milk? Do I say these things on human authority? Does not the law say the same? For as written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain. Is it, the, is it for oxen that God is concerned? Does he not speak entirely for our sake? It was written for our sake, because the plowman oh, lost my spot. <laughs> because the plowman should plow in hope, and the thresher thresh in hope of sharing in the crop. If we have sown spiritual things among you, is it too much if we reap material things from you? If others share this rightful claim on you, do we not uh, do not we even more? Nevertheless, we have not made use of this right, but we endure everything, anything rather than put an obstacle in the way of the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that those who are employed in the temple service uh, get their food from the temple, and those who serve at the altar share in the sacrificial offerings? In the same way, the Lord commanded that those who proclaim the gospel should get their living by the gospel. But I have made no use of any of these rights, nor am I writing these things to secure any such provision. For I would rather die than have anyone deprive me of my ground for boasting. For if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but not of my own will. I am still entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win the Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in his last days he's spoken to us by his son. All right, so we jump into this this defense that Paul gives about his apostleship. And um, basically what's kind of going on here is that um, the the people of Corinthians don't... um, don't see much value in Paul's apostleship, um, and so possibly not taking much, putting much stock into what he's saying, what he's directing them, or how he's rebuking them, or um, whatever. And um, the the idea here is a lot of what Paul is talking about is how you know, hey, you know, isn't it right that um, that as an apostle, as a, as a worker in the in the in the harvest or in the god in god's field uh, as a worker of the gospel he is entitled to be to be compensated to be cared for for the churches under his care to provide for him i mean that, that's that's the idea 
Um, but he says, you know, but I don't. It, it's it's his thing. He he doesn't he doesn't want to make use of the right because he says I do have the right, but I make no use of it um, because he wants to present the gospel free of charge. He doesn't want to um, have any reason that people would look at him and say, oh, you're, you know, whatever they might say, oh, you're just doing it for the money, or by giving him money, they, they might tr think that they have some kind of special um, privilege or sway with him. And um, I, I totally, <laughs> I totally get um, where he's coming from for this, uh, just because whenever money and the ministry of the gospel come together, it's there's a lot of weird things that can happen, um, which is why I, I've always had a policy that, um, you know, as a pastor, I don't do anything with money. I don't, I don't touch it. I, I, I am completely, completely detached from it. So even if somebody gives me like their offerings, like, oh, I forgot to put this in, nine times out of ten, I'll, I'll just direct them to where they can put it. Um, that one time it might be because it's just inconvenient, so I will take it and then go put it into the um, the little locked box where we we keep them. But um, you know, it's it's just a really weird place when you know people think that oh well, if I'm a big giver, then I should have influence, or or if you know that I'm a big giver, then you should you know pat you know cater to my needs. I I don't play that game. I, I know nothing about what anybody gives at my churches. Um, and yeah, I, I am completely divorced from him. But anyway, not enough about me. Um, Paul is is saying here how he he does not want to take a um, take a, a wage for what he's doing. And what we kind of see going on here is that what this plays into is how the Corinthians, you know, part of why they don't see much value in what Paul is offering is because it's free. He's not; they're not paying for it. Um, which is usually how we value or view things. Um, you know, we, we like free stuff, but if you have something that's free and something that costs, you know, a, a nice little chunk of money, which one do you value more? <laughs> usually it's that one that costs money, right? Um, and the same thing with, like, services. You know, what, what do you say when, when um, you know, you, you get what you pay for? Meaning that if you want good quality you have to pay for good quality. If you're paying for cheap, then you're going to get cheap. And that's how we operate, um, generally speaking. And so when that interacts with the uh, ministry of the gospel, we tend to have the same kind of um, feeling about it. That, you know, if, if we're, if we're going to pay, we, we got to get quality. Um, and if you're not paying, well, then you're not going to get good quality. Um, and how this, that's kind of a general kind of way that we function, but the, the, the crazy thing is how this actually gets, um, infects our uh, theology, is that is that feeds into our constant desire, and, or desire, well, desire, that works, uh, desire tendency to try to inject ourselves into salvation, to try to give ourselves a role to say that we have to do something, that we must be doing something in order to make God happy. You know, sure, we're saved by, by faith, and that's not of our, ourselves, it's a gift from God. Yeah, sure, 100%. But if I want to make God happy, if I want God to be smiling at me, then I need to do this, this, and this. We're talking about self-righteousness there. We're talking about doing these things to earn favor with God. So, um, you know, we're, we're trying to inject our own works into it. And part of the reason behind that is because um, we want to have, we want to provide something. We want to do something because if it's free, there we don't see the value. There's got to be more to it than that. Um, and so we, we try to put our own effort in to, to up the value, which is a crazy concept. You know, we've got this wonderful free gift of God's grace through Jesus Christ on the cross, sent, given to us through the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Excuse me. And we think that we can add anything to that. Um, but that's kind of how that, that thinking can, can make its way into our theology and just make a mess of things. And so this is a really interesting text for that. Um, you know, usually you, you jump to the end where he talks about, you know, I've become all things well people. I mean, we, we could talk about that, but I think it's, it's, it's a lot more interesting to see how um, the Corinthians and their 
estimation of value for what is free versus what is paid for um, and how that operates within us just in general but then how that general kind of thing can find its way into our theology and just wreck it and get us to be thinking more about our works, our efforts, our merit in terms of God's status or our status with God. Um, so very interesting thing to consider and uh, that uh, is, is brought out in this text. All right, well, let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant us this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. All right, well, thank you for joining me today. Hope this was uh, interesting and uh, that it is a blessing to your uh, Monday. And uh, until, until tomorrow, peace be with you.